Hail and well met, darling internet friends. Recently, I saw this image and it's amazing. It's a combination of a late 1880s bustle and a chair. And it's the most fantastically ridiculous thing I've ever seen. I need it. I mean, honestly, that's what we're getting to. I need it. It needs me. We need each other. And let's just make that happen. So to get started, I needed some long metal sticks and some very short metal sticks and some wood sticks. So I went to the hardware store and got all of those. Now let's uh, try to put them together. By the way, I'm Morgan Donner. I, I don't know if I need to keep introducing myself. Hello, it's me. Okay. I have acquired the very exciting sticks. I'm just hitting things. Uh, so speaking of things, we are now going to be filming in my very aesthetic garage because that's where things like the table saw and my brand new birthday bandsaw. Is that not just the most exciting thing you've ever seen? So she is used, but in great condition. So all I'm gonna do now in order to help prepare her for use is clean up some of these spider webs. They won't really hurt anything, but I want them gone. So I found the patent for the original 1886 one, you can see published here in December, based on vague proportions for how she's depicted sitting. I estimated at this length, proportionate to my own body, and then from there, proportionally scaled up the other elements. So that is vaguely what we're going for here today. Here's our big wood stick. We're going to cut it, make it a smaller wood stick. So we didn't need that whole big long length. We've cut it down to just what we need. And then from here, we're gonna cut it into a bunch of narrow strips for the legs. Behold the steaks. So right now we're trying to find the correct angle for the seat here and just mocking it up based on uh, stools and tools we have around. Oh, yeah, that definitely feels like about to fall down. Like maybe a little bit less slant. Once we got all four of the leg lengths marked out for the chair, I moved on to the kind of sexy waist strap contraption situation. It could be made out of leather or some other sturdier material, but I decided to go for some heavyweight twill tape and just uh, call that good enough. After marking out the approximate waist and three side back strap things, I promptly set it aside and forgot about it so that I could go play with the bandsaw. And then of course the blade immediately breaks, which, you know, cool, 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 cool. Hopefully that is just an old blade and not some like misalignment error with the machine. For now, we're gonna set this aside and use other tool. It's an A. Well, I guess it's a V. Once we put down the cross beam bit, it'll be an A, like this. Yes, there we go. Now it's an A. Da, 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 da. Do, do, do. So explain what what happens here? So I'm gonna cut away about half of this and then the corresponding half of this to make a lap joint. Mm -hmm. um, and then down here, uh, I'm going to cut this and then basically mortise and tenon these, which might be tricky with my mortising chisels packed away. That, that would make that difficult. Is there a way to do it without mortise and tenon? Uh, we could do it the Victorian way by slapping metal braces over everything. Mr. Donner would like me to add a little note here saying that his wood shop is currently packed away and thus that's the reason why we've had to work on the floor for a lot of this project and kind of use a, a hodgepodge of tools. He promises that his shop is normally much nicer. <laughs> Do, 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 
Fortunately, we were able to borrow the wood shop slash garage space of a friend who had a workbench, which we were sorely in need of. It is the first A. It is all cut and everything. Just need screws. Very excited. We're working on the second one. We've pretty much done all of the wood cutting. Now it's just gluing things together as needed and then giving them 24 hours to dry. All right, so while that glue is drying up on the chair, I'm gonna show you what just came in the mail. So today's video is sponsored by Hunt a Killer and I had this whole like bit planned out. I was going to put on the finished chair bustle thing and be like, now that I can sit wherever I want, let's play a game. But I'm really, really impatient and I kinda wanna open this up and check it out now. So let's see what we've got. Comes with a cute little pin. Can you imagine being out and about and like seeing someone else with a hunter killer pin and being like, oh, I know where that's from. And then we have a big old- Hunter Killer is like a cross between a murder mystery novel and an escape room. You can hang out with your friends on a video call or snuggle up on a date night and solve the puzzle together, or even alone if solo adventure is just more your style. Part of what makes this game so cool is the very tactile nature of the game pieces. They clearly put a so lot cute. of thought and effort into designing a really interesting experience. Right now, you can go to huntakiller.com slash Morgan and use code Morgan for 20% off your first box. Again, make sure to use code Morgan for a 20% discount. Do you have what it takes to hunt a killer? So the glue in our wood joints is still drying, but in the meantime, we can go ahead and get started on getting the brace attached to the underside of the seat. This is gonna be really nice because now the strongest part of the legs is going to be supporting the brace, and then the brace is going to support the entire underside of the chair, which is just fantastic. It should lead to a pretty strong and sturdy result. We took a couple days break, but we have what is starting to look like a chair, which is very exciting. We do have a small break here where unfortunately the screws don't actually go through the right spot to keep the two bits of the leg together. So we're gonna need to fix that. We have the first crisscrossy brace done, zigzagging down the leg. It's very exciting. I need to make a second one and I probably should get started on the waist strap contraption component.
So the ends of the straps that are going to hold my chair, I need to buckle in. I thought that I had some buckles that were as wide as the straps, but it turns out I don't. I don't even have three matching straps, but that's okay. This will be the buckle end of the strap, and this will get attached to the chair. I feel like that'll be a little bit more sturdy, because if this breaks, it's easy enough to just replace that. But I want to I wanna attach this to the chair, so I prefer it be something on the sturdier side. All right, y'all, you ready to try on a chair? I went ahead and put on a corset since this style is definitely meant to be worn with a corset. That's going to distribute the weight of the waistband a lot more evenly rather than having it pull at the front of my stomach a lot. So that should make it a fairly comfortable experience in theory. Uh, I'm wearing pantaloons. You guys are always so surprised when you see me in pants, just because I mostly wear dresses doesn't mean I don't have them. I figure this way you'll be able to really clearly see the chair and like where my legs are in relation to the chair. So let's try her on. In theory, I sit my butt down here. There we go. Oh no. <laughs> So this only feels slightly ridiculous. Oh, I don't think I like the feeling of the chair following you when you get up. Like, yep, that's weird. Look, I've got a butt. This is entirely ridiculous. I'm really, really curious how this is going to interact with like a bunch of petticoats, which is in theory what it was made to do. You want to come see me put on my chair that you made 90% of? Sure. Come on, come on. Have you seen it since I put on the straps? Oh, I have not seen it with the straps attached to it. Here are our straps. Oh, oh. Very good, yes. Yes, yes. Very. Looks like it's holding with you bearing. 
yeah, no, it, it definitely doesn't feel like I'm gonna crush it. <laughs> nice. Chair has succeeded at test number one, not falling apart. <laughs> and two, being able to hold weight. It is interesting. Obviously, I've not had like long term uh, walking about. Yeah. How do you feel about where the seat is landing? Um, right now that's fine. I'm curious to see it with like a bustle, like, skirt yeah. over it. All right. Well, walk toward me. I want to see you go through a doorway with that thing. Oh! <laughs> I'm glad we didn't go too much narrower. I feel like that would have been an issue. Yeah. Because then your legs would be definitely smacking the sides. Initial, like, results are promising. Mm -hmm. it, it fits. I sit. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, I'm going to put on all the, the skirtsy bits. Behold, my attempt at 1880s costume about oh goodness almost 10 years ago and now i didn't even know it was 1880s i just looked for victorian yeah that that shows you how much i knew i did apparently know enough to go look at like period shapes of clothing like they're the the seams are kind of period shaped the uh, the the pieces on the side here like that is very kind of recognizably late Victorian, which is cool. There are a lot of very interesting choices with this. And, you know, I thought it might be fun to do kind of a little look down memory lane with me. So amusingly, when I got this out of the closet, I was legit surprised that it had hooks and eyes inside because I distinctly remember the first time wearing this, which I think I only wore it once or twice. I just overlapped the edges and pinned my way down. I don't remember adding hooks and eyes, although I lent this out to a few different friends over the years, so maybe one of them kindly added these in for me. I don't know. Or maybe I just got a bee in my bonnet one day and did it myself. This is made completely out of muslin. This, the under petticoat skirt situation, the over skirt all of this is made out of a white cotton muslin because it was what i could afford which is fair you know you, you gotta do what you gotta do i i clearly felt like this didn't have enough bulk on its own so <laughs> i don't know if you can see that i used cotton batting the kind of stuff that you get from a quilt that is what this is interfaced with i i guess i i felt like it needed some heft <laughs> it's it's a choice, you know? Here she is in all her dubious glory. Did I only pin? Oh, oh weird. Okay. Apparently I decided that this side needed a bone, but not this one. Or maybe I just got tired of adding bones at some point. Again, that's a, that's a choice. Okay. It is very cool to look at old work and wonder what the heck you were doing at some parts, but also be kind of a little bit impressed with yourself. It's a really funny, funny little thing to, to look at and experience. I am not going to be wearing this today. I have a nicer new top to wear instead. I am going to wear the skirts though because these are the only even remotely 1880s skirts that will uh, accommodate and help with the whole bustle situations. To get dressed, I have my first three layers, a shift, a set of drawers, and a corset. For those of you that have been asking me what I do with my laces, I like to tie them in a very simple bow knot and then tuck the excess in below the center opening and then off towards the right. This keeps them nice and neat and out of the way. For a fourth layer, I've tossed on a shirt and what what am I doing? I'm gonna continue getting dressed, but first something needs to be done with this. And I had a lot of questions in my last video about how I did the, the, the ribbon thing, so I'm gonna show you that now. But this video isn't about hair stuff, so like, watch quickly. <laughs> That was probably about as clear as mud, but hopefully it at least vaguely got the, uh, the point across. I think I'm gonna curl my little wispies here so that they're 
looking all extra cute. Although I could leave them down. No, 1880s. Let's go curl them. The fifth, I guess, layer is going to be the bustle chair itself and then a little bustle pad over top of that since the chair doesn't really add anything higher up where the skirt support is going to need it. Seventh is the first petticoat and eighth is a second petticoat. This is such a cute style that I have clearly not put closures into. I love the ruffle and pin tuck look of the 1880s. It's kind of ridiculous, but so, so darn cute. On a whim, I tried on my new 1890 skirt to see if it would fit over the chair and it totally worked. So now it's layer nine. Continuing with my lack of closures, I've pinned the overskirt on top and uh, I, don't, I don't know that this bustling is correct at all, but meh. And now, unfortunately, because I have never actually added any finishing to this at all, I'm going to have to just sort of pin myself in and call it good. Alrighty, so I think we are about ready to hit the town see see how well this works although i do of course need to get some shoes on first we have landed everything's fine shoes oh well see there's my first hitch the skirts can catch under the leg of the chair which makes it tricky when you want to move your skirts around what a weird invention now that i am dressed and have pretty pretty shoes upon my feet. Ignore that blue tape. It's there for a reason. Anyways, how am I gonna get into the car? Well, that was kind of a, a good test, I suppose. Oh, I, I guess there's not any people here. I can take this off. Can I? No, I can't. Sorry. That wasn't too bad. Like, it's yeah. it was a good like extended walk around the mall. Not not too bad. I didn't feel like it was hitting things. I wasn't knocking stuff over all over the place, which I legit a little bit of a concern. Not bad. Hmm. Alrighty, that was that was a lot of fun going adventuring about. There's a lot of things that I'm honestly really, really surprised about. To be honest, I didn't think it would work very well with the bustle skirts over it. I, I felt like it wouldn't hide well underneath skirts, nor do like a very good job of holding them out, so it'd be kind of useless. But like, no, it it did pretty much what you would expect a bustle to do which is to hold out like the back part of your skirt um, especially when you add some good uh, padding as well which a lot of bustles that were worn in the 1880s were a combination of garments not one single thing you know uh, so that worked out pretty well um, it was also really surprising how easy it was to just sit wherever like that I thought it was gonna be super finicky and you do have to be careful I feel like you don't expect your seat to be tilted slightly, which we did because that was what was on the patent diagram. I think it probably would have made more sense and like felt more normal if it had been flat. But mm, I guess I don't know until I actually try it out. But you know, all in all, not too bad, not too bad. And one last thing before I let you go, because I know there's going to be questions about it otherwise, I did go ahead and weigh the chair, which came out to just over four and a half pounds. And I also weighed all of the pieces of the 1880s outfit, which came out to just under seven and a half for a total combined weight with outfit with the bustle chair of about 12 pounds. This is, of course, a very light outfit. If you were to make the dress out of a heavier wool or something, it would definitely weigh a lot more in total. Total. For context, if it helps, the jeans and t-shirt kind of 
outfit here, which I know it's touching the table. Pretend it's not. I, I promise I measured it multiple times to check. Anyways, that came out to just under two pounds. So 12 versus two. Thank you all for joining me on a very silly chair making adventure. I hope it was as much fun for you as it was for me.